Max Payne is hands down one of the greatest third person shooting games of all time, and though I'm really an FPS guy through and through, both the first and second game in the series are easily my top 10 games of all time. As one of the first video games to fully implement a cohesive and enjoyable slow motion mechanic, it also had a superbly written story, featuring an undercover burnout cop with nothing to lose. Taken on the mob against the backdrop of New York City as it's hit by a record-breaking blizzard. With graphic novel cinematics, John Woo inspired gunplay in a film noir tone, it quickly became one of the most well-received games of 2001. And its sequel, Max Payne 2, released in 2003, was met with similar acclaim. I have to be honest here and say if that you think these games aren't any good, then you may objectively have bad taste in gaming. I'd also wager that there's few people out there that don't agree that these games have really stood the test of time, and Max Payne 1 and 2 still offer up challenging, violent and enjoyable shooting with a kick-ass soundtrack to boot. So what happens when you combine something so awesome like Max Payne with something as influential and industry-defining as a game like Half-Life? Well, Sunny Jims, that's what we call Half Payne. Some bright spark has gone ahead and combined the bullet time and shoot dodging mechanics of Max Payne and thrown them into the world of Half-Life's tightly crafted single player campaign where you escape the depths of the Black Mesa complex and fight back against aliens and soldiers alike. And you know what? It's good. It's pretty damn good. So let's take a look at it shall we and see just why that is. Before I start, I should also say that it's probably best if you finished Half-Life before watching this video because of spoilers and all that kind of stuff. I mean, look, that should really be obvious, but the stupidity of some people on the internet never ceases to amaze me. Anyway, I don't think I need to go into any kind of history lesson for Half-Life. Chances are most people have already played it, and if you haven't and call yourself a gamer, then I have to ask what you've been doing with your life. So the game opens up as per usual with the iconic and drawn out tram ride into the Black Mesa complex, followed shortly by the resonance cascade unleashing the portal that turns the entire place into a war zone. Instead of a HEV suit, you pick up Max's trademark leather jacket and medkits and HEV energy charging stations are replaced with pain pills, because we all know how much Max likes popping those things like they're goddamn Skittles. Down the bottom of the heads up display you've got Max's silhouette which serves as your health bar becoming more red depending on how much damage you've taken. Next to that is the hourglass which indicates how much bullet time you've got left and like the original Max Payne games this thing fills up by killing enemies. Now if you're so inclined and just want to dick around with the bullet time there is actually a way to make the bullet time infinite in the console which I think is a nice inclusion. The actual campaign itself is practically untouched, which is a good or bad thing I suppose depending on your point of view. And the lols throughout the campaign in the chapters like Residue Processing, Office Complex and certain sections on Zen are again kind of boring and a little bit slow even with the new mechanics that have been added in. But it's really during some of the more action packed chapters like We've Got Hostiles, On A Rail and Surface Tension where the mod truly shines, and shines it indeed does. I mentioned earlier that the game carries across those key mechanics, namely the bullet time and the shoot dodge ability, and much like in Max Payne, these are really the bread and butter of Half Payne's gameplay. Shoot dodging, for instance, feels incredibly smooth and responsive, even giving you somewhat limited air control, and much like Max Payne 2 and 3, allowing you to keep firing once you've landed before having to get back to your feet. When you activate bullet time and sidestep, you can see the bullets whizzing through the air as well, just like you could in the Max Payne games. Gotta say too, it feels pretty damn badass, shoot dodging around a small group of marines, leaping right into their face and blasting them with both barrels of the Spaz-12, or slowing the game down as you launch a perfectly placed grenade from the MP5 and watching two or three guys all jib simultaneously. Now obviously some of the animations in the game weren't designed with the notion that they'd be seen in slow motion, and as a result you're occasionally going to see a few hiccups here and there with certain scripted sequences or just during combat in general. This is kind of to be expected considering this stuff was animated almost 20 years ago, but none of it really sticks out all that much and it's still just so much fun shooting shit in slow motion that it doesn't really matter. Another big thing about the Max Payne games was the way they handled the weapon ballistics and bullet drop-off, adding in a sort of delay between when the player or an enemy fires their weapon and the time it takes to reach its target. Now this was something that really helped the balancing, because if every enemy was simply hit scanning, well, it wouldn't make the shooting all that much fun. This seems to have been carried across somewhat in half pain, at least when you're in slow motion anyway, making it possible to dodge bullets and even other formerly line of sight attacks like the Vortigaunt's lightning. Hey,
Most folks who've played Half-Life will know that most enemy damage you take in this game is based on whether or not you're in an enemy's line of sight. So shaking this up a bit to match the way it worked in Max Payne is a change I can really get behind and I think it definitely improves the shooting overall. Now being a bit of a work in progress, Half Pain does feel like it's still missing a lot of content. Currently the mod still features all the original Half-Life weapons with a few minor changes like the Glock replaced with the Berettas and the ability to dual wield them. Also worth mentioning is that the Magnum has been replaced with the Desert Eagle from Opposing Force, but otherwise every other weapon uses the original model, just with a few of them having different sound effects. Part of what made the Max Payne game so much fun was using all the different guns, most of which were pretty damn good, especially in Max Payne 2. The M4 Carbine, the Dragonov and the Striker for instance were just absolutely brutal. Now I'd hope that in the future updates to the mod we can see this sort of stuff added in. I mean the thought of firing off dual ingrams at a bunch of Vortigons or throwing a Molotov cocktail at a group of Marines is the stuff of wet dreams. I think the fact too that the mod doesn't use any of the music from Max Payne is a bit of wasted potential as well. Some of the music tracks used in the first game during some of the tougher gunfights was pretty damn badass and it really helped to make a lot of those moments more memorable. This kind of thing if it was added into Half Pain, I think would really propel the mod to the next level and make it feel more like a total conversion. At the moment a few of Max's lines have been carried over into the mod but these are sadly few and far between which is kind of the downside of a game that features a mute protagonist. Now this. This was a gun. Feeling hit by a point blank shot straight in the face. Something was not right about this. This gun, this gun looked like a real nasty bastard. Overall, there's nothing really objectively bad about the mod, and I think the only downside to the whole thing again is that it relies on Half-Life's campaign as its backdrop. I don't know how familiar most people are with Half-Life, but it's not always the most action-packed shooting game. Don't get me wrong, I mean there's chapters where you're almost exclusively in combat, like we've got hostiles and surface tension. But then there's slower chapters like Anomalous Materials and even the later chapters like Residue Processing where you don't engage in combat much at all. You know, you spend more time moving through conveyor belts for 15 minutes than shooting anything. I guess my point is that if you're going to try the mod out, then you're really going to be in it for the long haul. You can't just really start a new save file up and expect to start shoot dodging around Marines with the MP5. You've got to sit through all that same build up as if you were playing the game vanilla. Now this doesn't mean that Half Pain is bad, and I'm not trying to say that Half-Life is bad either, it's just a different kind of beast in that sense. To something like Doom for instance, where you can see the effect of a mod within seconds when loading it up, and also probably know within a minute or two if it's going to be your cup of tea. Half Pain has still got a lot of work to be done, but even in its current state, it's a lot of fun to play. Also if for some reason you haven't played Half-Life or Max Payne, then use this video as motivation to go and play those games as well, like seriously. The mod also combines two of my favourite things, Half-Life and Max Payne. It's like combining brunettes and glasses, Swiss cheese and corned beef, or peas and mint jelly. And if nothing else, Sunny Jim's at least it's not another mod that someone's just thrown the word brutal in front of.